Good morning. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that, ever mindful of the end of all things and the day of your just judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you forever hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament reading is from the prophet Daniel, the seventh chapter. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. 
A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed, and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 50. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? The epistle lesson is from St. Peter's second letter, the third chapter. Know this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked this fact The heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, and that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, They with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed." Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, Since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God,
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are you a goat or a lamb? God's word is clear. Judgment day is coming. Christ will come again to judge both the living and the dead. Jesus said he is coming soon. Those who scoff at his existence or those who oppose his reign following their own sinful desires will be judged. Those who insist that they are autonomous and can choose to do whatever they want will actually be held accountable by him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. The earth will not remain forever. The end of the world is coming. Judgment day is coming. The earth was formed by the word of God, and by the same powerful word of God, the earth will be destroyed by fire on the day of judgment. Jesus promised that he will come again. The Lord is not slow to fulfill that promise, but he's patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Whether we are sheep or goats is critically important. Note that in our gospel reading today, Jesus indicates that the sheep are the ones who get to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Sheep don't earn their place in heaven, but Jesus said they're the ones who are blessed by the Father and therefore get to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We don't earn our way into heaven by helping the least of these, but those who are blessed with true faith, those whom God counts as sheep, do in fact naturally help others. Are you a goat or a sheep? The answer to that question is vitally important. In recent years, goat, G-O-A-T, has taken on a meaning that is different than a mere farm animal. Sometimes when people claim to be a goat, it sometimes means they are claiming to be the greatest of all time. And although that particular meaning did not exist yet when Jesus was making his analogy in our text today, he did address the topic of arrogance elsewhere. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Jesus thought that everyone who exalts himself will be brought down, but the one who exalts or humbles himself will be exalted. Christ was speaking of himself being exalted on Judgment Day. He is the one who humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. He did so all on your behalf. He is the one who has now ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Judgment day, he alone gets all the glory. The scripture clearly indicates the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. If we think of ourselves as goats or great people who deserve to be exalted into heaven, we will be brought down into Hades. The Bible teaches that we are under a curse if we are trusting in our own flesh, our own ability to get into heaven. If we think that we have lived a life that is good enough to get into heaven, then we are a curse like the goats on Jesus' left. God expects us all to be striving for improvement. He expects us all to repent and take constructive criticism to heart. And when someone rebukes or corrects us, according to God's word, we should consider it a kindness. Yet we sinners have difficulty swallowing our pride and acknowledging our wretched inclination to err. According to scriptures, though, no one is good but God alone. So if we are considering ourselves to be a goat in the egotistical sense of that word, we can also expect to be considered a goat on Judgment Day. The Lord does not want us to think or act arrogantly, 
But the Lord does want us, he does want us to have confidence on the day of judgment. He doesn't want us to have confidence and trust in our own flesh, but he does want us to be those who are blessed who have confidence in the Lord. He wants us to trust in the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Scripture says, by this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment. Jesus, he is the shepherd who will come in glory and will separate the sheep from the goats. But he is the good shepherd who has laid down his life for the sheep. Jesus is the goat, the greatest of all time, who never sinned or made any mistakes at all. Yet he became the sacrificial goat on the day of atonement. As was foreshadowed in the book of Leviticus, Jesus became our scapegoat. On the Day of Atonement, a goat was slaughtered in the place of the people so that they could escape the penalty for their sins, namely death. There were two coats, goats on that Day of Atonement. One was killed as a sin offering, and the other was a scapegoat, or as is ill in the Hebrew. The high priest was to lay both his hands on the head of that scapegoat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people, all their transgressions, all their sins. Then the goat was to be sent away into the wilderness to bear all their iniquities as a scapegoat. The goat was sent away from God's gracious presence at the temple. He was sent away in place of the people. Christ took our place. He became a goat for us. Jesus is not only the greatest of all time, the greatest person who ever lived. He is the only perfect human being who never needed correction. He was also like a loving shepherd who put himself in harm's way to save us straying sheep. He did this by taking all our sins, taking them all up and carrying them to the cross. On the Day of Atonement, on Good Friday, when Jesus paid for all of our sins, he was paying the penalty that would have otherwise been paid by us on Judgment Day. He suffered and died as he took our judgment. And though we have acted like selfish and stubborn goats or arrogant goats, Jesus became the scapegoat so that we might enjoy God's blessing as sheep. Because Jesus became a sacrificial goat and a scapegoat in our place, all who repent and look to him for mercy are considered to be his sheep who are blessed. Because of what Jesus has done, become a scapegoat for us, we can actually look forward to Judgment Day. For all who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death so that we receive the benefit of his death and his resurrection. In baptism, he pours his love into our hearts of the Holy Spirit so that we might become his blessed sheep. His love has been poured into our hearts so that we have confidence for the Day of Judgment. We have confidence in his love that has been already shown to us when he became a sacrificial goat on our behalf. The love that he showed to us on the cross, that he poured into us at our baptism, has an effect on us. We love because he first loved us. His love and blessing moves us to love God and love our neighbors, especially those who are of the household of faith. As Jesus said, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. In baptism, we receive the spirit of adoption, and we become members of his heavenly household. Yes, brothers and sisters in Christ, who are co-heirs of the eternal kingdom. Because we have the spirit of adoption, we naturally show love and concern for brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus became a sacrificial goat in our place, but he rose from the dead. Not only that, but he has now been exalted up into heaven where he reigns, not as a goat, but as the lamb. In the book of Revelation, Jesus is depicted in heaven as the lamb who was slain, but has overcome sin and death and is standing. In baptism, you were made to be a part of the body of Christ, a member of that lamb 
who reigns. So according to God's word, you are therefore a sheep. Yes, you are the sheep who have been blessed by the Father. Therefore, you will inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus and for life everlasting. Amen. Please rise for prayer if you're able. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, give your church steadfast resolve and a joyful spirit as we engage in works of mercy and love. Lead us to remember we are your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which you prepared beforehand for us to do. Grant us humility that we would not boast in works, but only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, heal the divisions among your people. Curb all sinful ambition. Silence the desires of our sinful flesh. And grant us hearts eager to be reconciled with each other in Christian love. That all people will know we are your disciples. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious God, heal the divisions among your people. Gracious Lord, please bless the work of missionaries everywhere. We ask for a particular blessing upon Reverend Sean Trump and his work in Africa, Reverend Micah Wildauer and his work in Belize. Bless also our mission work here in our neighborhood and in our school. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty God, bless all in authority with wisdom and temperance. Protect our police, firefighters, and those who serve in the armed forces from harm and danger that peace may be established in our lifetime according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are homebound. Give them comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, but that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the great physician of both body and soul. Have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing, especially Linda, David, Dennis, Jason, Karen, John, Maria, Stephen, William, Mary, Jen, Kurt, Vivian, Dick, John, Marge, Willie, Carrie, Jim, Bob, and Joseph. Also those who are in hospice, especially Joyce. Bless them all with strength and faith in their times of need. Bless the work of medical professionals that they may serve as your instruments of healing. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Lord, bless our school and our efforts to connect the students and their families to the love of Christ. We ask for your blessing upon our efforts to find a good principle for the coming year. We ask your continued blessings upon all the work of those who are associated with our church and school, either as employees or volunteers. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. O oh Lord God, look with compassion upon all those who are suffering from hunger, homelessness, poverty, discrimination, reduced employment, or unemployment. Have mercy and take away their sufferings. Move us all to be your instruments of mercy and grace to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. And because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of all creation. You have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We we'll give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Welcome visitors, we're glad you could join us today. Please join us for coffee and treats downstairs and for Bible study where the conversation continues after those, uh, that time of fellowship. At this time I'd like everyone to look around. If you don't know your neighbor right next to you, this is a perfect time to introduce yourself. Thanks for your service, appreciate you. Bruce, appreciate you. Thank you. Turned out to be a pretty day. 